This is take two of the King Bee making an attempt to make a video. What is happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Let me put on my headphones here. How are you? I hope you are. I hope you are whole. I hope you are well. I hope you are at home. And I hope you are safe. If you are experiencing difficulty, I am sorry about that. I wish I wish all the best for you and for everybody out there. I know that these are very difficult times for many, many people. And uh, my thoughts are with you. If, you, if, you're, if it's difficult and you're using YouTube as a way to, to uh, find some respite from difficulty, I hope you find it. If you are here to learn about uh, voiceover and maybe you're finding yourself at home and you say, boy, I'd like to start using my voice to do a creative outlet, to, to do something creative with my voice and maybe get paid a couple of bucks for it, then you've come to the right place. Today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about two different microphones that I have in the booth here that we're going to compare, that we're going to evaluate, see how they perform, see the differences before so that you can uh, sort of get acquainted and see if this might be the right microphone for you. The primary one that we're going to be talking about here, the, the real point of the comparison is this microphone right here. This is the Neat Microphones King B cardioid condenser microphone. And as a point of comparison, we'll use one of my microphones. This one was sent to me by Neat. This one was sent to me by Lewitt a long time ago, but this is the Lewitt LCT 440 pure cardioid condenser microphone. When you see the text on the screen with the name of the microphone, that will be the microphone that you're listening to at that moment. So I'll talk and we'll, you'll get a chance to hear and we'll talk about the microphones when you might use it, what you might pay for it, pros and cons, so forth, so on. The King Bee is a little bit of a weird microphone. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've had a little bit of a, a time trying to wrap my head around it, not because it's a an unusual microphone per se, but the uh, the meta, the surroundings of this microphone make it a little bit interesting. Interesting is the word I use. Not good, not bad, but it's it's got me cogitating and it's got me trying to figure it out. Let's first, let's talk about the specifications of the microphone and why I've chosen these two as the point of comparison. On paper, these two microphones have very similar specifications. It will be to your ears to determine if they have a different sound as you go back and forth, if you prefer one sound to the other. And we'll talk about some of the factors that may affect your buying decision if you're looking between, say, these two or something, something like them. Okay. First is the pattern. These are both cardioid pattern microphones. A cardioid pattern, if that's a new term for you, a cardioid pattern microphone is one that is largely sensitive from the front and significantly less sensitive from the back. There is a pattern around the microphone, generally a heart-shaped pattern around the front of the microphone that it will be sensitive. And from the back of the microphone, it's less sensitive. It's not that it's deaf to what's behind it, it's just less sensitive. So that's good. And for voice work, generally what you're looking for is a cardioid microphone so that the stuff on the other side doesn't end up in the microphone. They have uh, roughly the same frequency response. They can hear the very lowest bass notes down to 20, uh, 20 hertz. The King B says it goes all the way down to 16 hertz. The Lewitt goes way down to 20, and the graph shows that it's flat at 20. So it's, it's sensitive way below 20 hertz. And they are both sensitive way up beyond the, the limits of human hearing, way up to 20,000 hertz. And they both have something of a presence boost which means the, the, the high frequencies are turned up ever so slightly in the, in the upper treble, uh, like about 5,000 hertz and above. And that gives uh, the voice a sense of brightness. It gives some air to the voice, makes the, makes the microphone sound nice and crisp and clear. Both of these microphones have it. Now, microphone manufacturers may tune their electronics to accentuate or de-accentuate cert certain frequencies. 
but that's uh, that's uh, 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 how how they sound. They both can handle very similar sound pressure levels, so the loudest sounds that you can throw at it. I've got the specifications on my screen down here. So uh, the Lewitt is 140 decibels, uh, 140 decibels for the uh, for the King Bee. The noise floor. The noise floor is the one that I pay most attention to for voice work is I don't want the microphone to introduce any hiss underneath my voice. And these are both extremely low noise floor. The Lewitt is 7 dBA. The King Bee, uh, uh, the Lewitt is 7. The King Bee is 6.5 dBA. For, uh, for what we're doing here, so as to be inaudibly different. I'll pause here for a moment to let you hear silence because we're all working from home today. You may hear other people in my house. Uh, so if that's the case, we'll just uh, have silence for a few seconds. Okay, so you can hear that they're both very quiet, and that, and that graph will show you the brighter the green, the louder it is, the closer to black, the quieter it is, and these are two, they should be fairly similar. We'll see if there's any differences on the graph. Other than that, dynamic range, 133 decibels for one, 134 decibels for the other. Largely the same. Do they sound the same? That's for you to decide if you hear noticeable differences. It's all just a, a, a function of which one. I am generally a fan of the way the Lewitt 440 sounds for me. So if this sounds similar, then I like them both. Now, here's where it gets a little strange. A little strange. One, these both of these microphones have an interesting uh, atypical. I'm going to go with atypical design language. The Lewitt is very uh, sort of like engineer. It's solid. It is stealthy. It's low profile. It is a very stealthy kind of mic. It does not stand out. It does not call attention to itself at all. On the other hand, the B microphones generally have a very pronounced design uh, language. Um, they're very present. They take that black and yellow uh, and really put it out there as part of the, the, the brand identity for these microphones. You look at this microphone. See, that's a that's a B. That's a B. Looks like a B. That's a B microphone from the shock mount that with the yellow uh, yellow cabling. It's got these yellow rubber bands that go around uh, go around the body of the microphone. Those are all part and parcel of the design language. So that's one thing that you have to know. If you're just in a booth by yourself, who cares what it looks like? From my from my perspective, who cares what it looks like? If you like the way it looks, uh, great. Doesn't change the sound at all, so far as I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> the way it looks doesn't change the sound. So there are, but there are differences. There's a cer certainly a significant size difference between the two microphones. The Lewitt is, uh, the Lewitts tend to be generally fairly compact microphones. It's a small microphone. The B, on the other hand, is actually a fairly large microphone. It's tall. It's, yeah, I'd say it's the size of a uh, I don't know a, a a 16 ounce can of beer. Uh, if you if you're looking at at a, at a tall boy or something like that, it's about that size. It's it's pretty big, whereas uh, the uh, the the Lewitt is is significantly smaller. I also chose these because they have a very similar uh, package. What they come with in the box, they both come with a shock mount, a really nice robust shock mount. That's this part here that the microphone floats in so that it doesn't feel rumbles from the outside. They both also come with a windscreen. The Lewitt has a little magnetic one that slides on and off and attaches to the shock mount, whereas the King Bee has a plate that sits on the front that actually just sort of friction fits onto the front itself. You just pop it off and you pop it back on. You get the whole package, which is actually really nice. The, one of the things that I was really confused about when the Bee was delivered to me is the packaging. It's kind of over the top. It's kind of over the top in a way that I'm not sure why it's done the way it is. I'm sure it looks good on the shelf, takes up a ton of space on the shelf, but you get this enormous, enormous case box thing 
for the microphone itself, it's plastic. It's not like a, it's not like a, 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 a like a Pelican case or anything like that. It's not a case that's going to be sturdy. The top and bottom are. Um, it's just this part is just cardboard, and it means that the top and bottom of the of it, it's not really a case. But you do get, you know, a bunch of stuff in here. You get a manual, you get foam, you get a toy for the worker bee. You get a toy. You get the shock mount. You get a bunch of stuff. Uh, there's a bag. Oh my goodness, there's even a bag in here to hold the microphone. Sorry, I'm getting the bag out. Holy cow. So there's a bag that you get. There's a whole bunch of stuff, right? So this is a, it's a very significant amount of packaging. I'm not really one to do unboxings. So, sorry, you're just, gonna, you're just seeing what it is. On the flip side, sort of in keeping with Lewitt, where they throw everything at the engineering of the microphone, the Lewitt, their unboxing experience is minimal, minimal. You get a pleather bag, you get some pressed cardboard doesn't make for a very long lasting um you got to take care of your little plastic box here i would have preferred uh, your cardboard box i would have preferred something plastic but at this price point i understand it the lewitt i think perfectly justifies its price at 269 dollars it's it's a good solid mid-range mic it's got good sound it's going to perform well robust solid mic when i was doing my research online beforehand the I found a review from 2015 Sound on Sound ma magazine, I think, and it then had a retail price of $350. And I think for the sound and what you get in the packaging, the quality of the microphone itself, I think $350 is actually a, a, a justified price. When I looked on Amazon to see what the current price of this is, it's $99. When I compared that to Sweetwater and to B&H, they have it at $130. And I can't, I can't wrap my head around that price. One, I think that this B microphone performs great at $129. It is a steal at $129 at $99. I was initially going to compare this to Lewitt's entry-level microphone, which is the 240 and this is like $129, really close. But I think the Worker Bee blows the 240 away. I think it blows the 240 away. The noise floor on the 240 is significantly higher. The noise floor on this one is like 19 decibels, consistent with an entry-level microphone. This one, it, it blows it out of the water. Though. So that's fantastic. That's fantastic. But I just showed you, they've got this enormous box. They've got all this packaging. They've got a toy, a shock mount. The entry-level Lewitt, it comes with this and this and a little clown nose that fits over the fits over the top you don't get the shock mount because they throw a lot of engineering and they want to give you the best mic they can at, at that price i don't understand how neat is doing it for 99 bucks when there's got to be $10 worth of packaging at least $10 worth of packaging just to get the thing to me I can't understand how neat is making dime one on this microphone. I can't tell if it's a pricing error, but I've watched the price of this microphone for a little while and it's been pretty consistently at $99 to $130. And I can't understand it because the quality of what you're getting is great. And the pedigree of the microphone is great too. These are neat, comes from... Um, uh, two of the founders of Blue Microphones. I think uh, they left Blue and they went out, went out on their own and they created this B line and there's a number of different microphones. There's the King B, there's the Worker B, then they have got a line of USB microphones. I've been super impressed, super impressed with what I've heard. If you don't mind the, the somewhat garish appearance of the microphone, they're great. I will say they also sent me, B also, or Neat also sent me, let's see if I can do this. They also sent me their um, XLR cable called the Beeline. <laughs> and this thing is also way over the top. Anybody remember the band Striper from the 80s with their yellow and black? Totally reminds me of the old 80s hair metal band Striper because they were all yellow and black. 
But look at this cable, braided outside cable, and compare it to my typical cable. Look at this. Let's see, can I do this? Look at the size difference between these, the thickness between these two cables. This seems like a vacuum cleaner cable. It's crazy. But I tell you what, it's robust. I would say that's probably the last XLR cable you're ever going to need. It is a super, super robust um, cable. So overall, so in sum, I would say that if you like the way this sounds, you could you could be perfectly happy with the the B line of microphones. It's certainly the worker B. If you like the way if you like the way it sounds, if you like the way it sounds compared to this, at ninety nine bucks. I can't even I can't even guess how they're doing it. I can't even guess how they're doing. A big thank you, a great big thank you to the folks at Neat for sending this to me. I do appreciate it. If you're interested, there'll be a link down in the description. If you follow that link, it sends a little commission my way without changing the price to you, affiliate link. Um, I'm grateful if you follow those links. It, it helps me out. It helps me continue to make videos and get past the things that I had to deal with before. So I'm very, very grateful for, uh, for Neat to send this microphone to me. Does that help? I hope that helps. I, it's a crazy, it's a crazy looking mic. It's a crazy looking mic, but it, I think it sounds good. I think it sounds really good. Thanks again to Neat. That's all I have for you today. Now, go get yourself a microphone. Go get yourself some sort of booth. Go use your living room. Go do something and make something creative for yourself. Go out there and record something amazing. Stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.